Hi, it's Angela here. It's Sunday the 23rd of April and I am at Wonderwall. It is day two for me of uh, Wonderwall today. Um, I didn't really take any video yesterday, but hopefully I shall get a few snapshots for you today. Um, yeah, that's uh, all there is to say really. Let's get on and um, have a look around some of the stores and do a bit of shopping. confession to make in real time it has been one whole week since Wonderwall I'm laughing because that's uh, just a little bit crazy but um, if all has gone well with my editing you will won't have noticed that you'll have just seen a quick clip of me saying hello at the festival followed by um, a little bit of the video that I took in the end I didn't actually take that much video um, I have to confess as, well, I don't need to confess, you already know, I'm very new to this whole video malarkey um, and I just couldn't quite get the hang of uh, filming out and about so my videos are a little bit jerky and random so I apologise for that but um, I wanted to stick it in anyway just to give you a bit of an idea of uh, the, you know, the setup at Wonderwall and some of the fabulous things that were there. Um, I noticed before I came out this morning that um, Zoe, who is Pins and Needles UK on Instagram this morning, had just put up a post to say that uh, she put um, on her YouTube channel uh, a video log of uh, her experience of Wonderwall. So if you want uh, a little bit more and you don't already watch Zoe, then pause this, hop on over to her channel and have a look. I haven't checked the video out yet, I will do when I get home from work this evening, um, but I'm sure it's uh, much better and <laughs> uh, perhaps uh, a bit more professional than uh, the clip that you've just seen from me. So it's now uh, Saturday the 29th of April, uh, it's bright and early in the morning just after 8 o'clock, uh, hence the bleary eyes and crazy hair. I am not a morning person whatsoever, um, but uh, I wanted to come in to the shop early as I 
I've tried a few times this week to record this video and it just hasn't happened uh, but I wanted to uh, sort of share with you obviously my little clip from Wonderwall and um, also I promised to, to share with you some of the things that uh, I purchased from the festival so I wanted to do that before um, it became a little bit irrelevant really as I say a whole week has already passed which is just nuts really. Um, today also marks the end pretty much of my first month uh, in the shop which yeah it's I just can't quite fathom that really <laughs> I guess it's true time flies when you're having fun it's been hard work but it's actually been brilliant fun as well um I've had some really good um amazing highs and a few lows I, I will admit but uh I might talk more about that in a, a short video next week this week I really want to just uh quickly share with you as I say the things that I I bought at Wonderwall um, and really have a quick chat to you about my experience there. So um, I went on both days, uh, the festival's on on a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, I managed to hop onto two coach trips, one on the Saturday leaving from Cardiff and the second one on the Sunday leaving from here in Penarth. The local quilters group uh, always organises a coach trip so um, we're able to kind of hop onto that. They always come and let us know the details about that and then we can collect names for people that uh, come into the shop that are interested in going on that coach trip so um, you know we don't kind of duplicate that we don't organize our own here from the shop but uh, that might change there was only a couple of people from the quilters group that actually went on the, the tour in the end and most of the um, people on the coach were customers regular customers here in the shop so maybe going forward we might take on the um arrangements for for organizing that trip but uh we'll see there'll be a, a whole year to wait before we need to, to think about that um but yeah both days uh were i'm glad i went both days it was pretty full on um but it was a completely different experience both days so saturday was um a lot lot busier um and i think there, when you go, it's on a sort of showground at um, in Mid Wales, so it's only about an hour and a half on the coach from here. Saturday was, um, yeah, it, it was crazy busy, and I kind of dashed around. I wanted to see everything. There are three barns. Once you get to the showground, there are three barns full of vendors. Um, I understand that the festival has grown from um, some of the other people that were on my coaches that have been in past years. Uh, I think there has only been sort of two barns or halls in the past, but um, it, it's now expanded to three. So there's so much to see. So on Saturday, I was kind of like tearing round and I wanted to see everything and kind of get the lay of the land um, and really kind of just to make sure I didn't miss anything really um, and there were lots and lots of people there uh, so it was sometimes quite difficult to, to get into some of the um, vending booths and things. Um, when I went back on Sunday obviously I didn't need to try and take everything in um, in, in the same way um, so it was a lot more relaxed and although it was busy still uh, there wasn't as many people um, there at any one time so it was a lot easier to, to get into the booths and actually have a proper look um, around uh, each of the, the stands. Uh, it was a really nice mix of um, vendors. There were obviously lots of indie dyers and yarn producers. There were quite a f few farm producers. Uh, there were also more, um, what I would say, craft stands. So people that were selling their made goods. So there was a few felters um, who had some amazing pieces there were some ceramicists um, who had lots of lovely um, yarn bowls and plates and cups and buttons and badges there were a few button sellers um, booksellers obviously there was uh, people uh, who had um, needles and tools and spinning wheels uh, spindles all sorts of things weaving frames or looms I should say I'm not really a weaver as you can tell uh, <laughs> Looms for weaving, I think, is the, the correct term for that, Angela. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was great. And there were animals to see as well. So uh, there were lots of sheep and um, there were some rabbits as well, some angoras, cute fluffies to kind of pet. And, uh, yeah, so 
it was re it was really nice. I've been to a couple of uh, festivals before. Um, I've been to Unravel in Farnham, and a few years ago there was a couple of uh, iterations of Bristol Warfare, although that doesn't seem to have happened for the last uh, few years for, for various reasons. Um, but each one is is different, and I think Wonderwall is by far the biggest that I've been to. Uh, Bristol Warfare was probably comparable in terms of venue and size but uh, when I went to, to Bristol Warfare it certainly wasn't as busy as, as Wonderwall so yeah it was very nice uh, I got to meet a few people um, I've already spoken about Zoe from Pins and Needles UK um, she was helping Jenny on the Owl About yarn stand Jenny is a local indie dyer in Cardiff uh, who um, has some lovely yarn and project bags and stitch markers uh, she has an Etsy shop so if you haven't checked her out then uh, you should hop on over there and do that um, so it was nice to meet them and um, with any luck I'm hoping to stock some of Jenny's yarns uh, in the shop at some point we've had a couple of discussions uh, and it looks like we will probably be able to go forward with that so I just need to, to get my finger out and get back in touch with Jenny to actually sort out the detail of that um, and hopefully the wall behind me here um, which currently has um, some of my Aracania yarns skeins hanging up um, will become my indie dye rack and um yeah so that's the plan anyway we'll we'll see but anyway i, I am digressing um back to wonderwall so i've got a bag of stuff on the chair next to me um that i am going to to show you i'm not going to show these things in any particular order i'm just going to grab them as they come out of the bag so you might remember <laughs> that before i went to wonderwall i said with a bit of a smile that i didn't need any more yarn um but of course who can resist and although we do have well in my opinion we have a great range of yarn here in the shop I was lucky to be able to kind of inherit uh, the the stock that was uh, already here and uh, that there is a good range but uh, it is at the moment for the most part um, commercially produced yarns and brands um, and I love my indie dyers and I love my uh, small producers and breed specific yarns so of course I wasn't going to come home from Wonderwall without any yarn I mean who was I kidding uh, <laughs> uh, but I didn't go super crazy although you might disagree by the time we get to the end of this video um, but I did also pick up um, what was my uh, originally intended purchases for Wonderwall which were a few bits and pieces for spinning um, but yeah I'm just going to grab stuff out of the bag as it comes um, no particular order <clears throat> and um, well yeah crack on stop waffling um, I'm not sure how long this video is but I haven't actually shown you anything yet have I so I'm sure you're shouting at the screen shut up Ange and show us some stuff so let's get on um, so as I said that um, one of my priorities was to try and get some bits and pieces for spinning uh, I've recently started spinning this year as I um, talked about in one of my previous videos um, so high on my priority list was a new spindle and there were some gorgeous spindles at Wonderwall um, there were some lovely wood turn spindles I saw some beautiful spindles that um, had um, as I was saying, my phone cut out on me. I completely forgot to delete some of the last video that I took and my phone fills up so quickly. So um, I think I was in the process of saying um, that I saw some absolutely beautiful spindles there. Um, there were some gorgeous wood turned spindles. Um, there were some acrylic spindles. There were 3D printed spindles. Uh, there was so much to choose from. Um, in the end, I stuck with... Um, my original thought and I went for a resin spindle from Spin City. I almost got tempted into buying a really nice wooden turn spindle um, but I, I didn't buy it on the first day, I bought on the second day um, for the majority of my purchases uh, so I had time to think about it overnight um, and I decided that I'd go for the Spin City spindle this time. Um, there's always next year so um, if I'm still spinning in a year's time then I'll probably treat myself to, to one of the nice wooden ones um, but yeah I went for um, <clears throat> one of the beautiful spindles from Spin City um, which uh, has pressed flowers and glitter. Um, there were so many to choose from I stood at the stand for probably about <laughs> 20 minutes um, trying to choose but in the end I went for this one um, so hopefully you can um, see that uh, so yeah beautiful pressed flowers and glitter who can resist a bit of sparkle 
um, and as you can see I have started spinning on it I couldn't resist um, and it spins absolutely beautifully I went for um, one that had a slightly larger um, sort of resin top to it they had some smaller ones and they had some square ones um, but I went for the biggest and it's quite a heavy spindle and it's actually spinning beautifully um, I have got some fiber on here which I also bought from Wonderwall um, but I'll hopefully you can kind of see that um, it, how lovely it's spinning up um, yeah it's just beautiful to work with um, <clears throat> so yeah I am super pleased um, that I went uh, for, for the spin city um, yeah absolutely beautiful and the fiber I'll tell you a little bit about that um, this was from a small farm producer uh, one thing I did find I'm just gonna try and see if I've got the um, details in my tucked away in my bag so sorry for looking away from the camera um, while I dig around and try and find that can't put my hands on it at the moment <clears throat> ah, here it is um, one thing I did um, think about Wonderwall was that there weren't that many Welsh producers which I thought was a bit of a shame um, I'm looking to hopefully stock some Welsh wool in the shop we do quite get often get asked if we have any um, so I was hoping that Wonderwall would um, kind of help me get some connections with um, some Welsh producers but uh, there were a few um, but uh, not as many as, as I'd hoped but this one um, it was a lovely small farm I had a chat to the lady um, and um, the fibre uh, she was telling me is from her small flock of sheep um, I'm going to completely butcher these names because they are um, crazy Welsh names and although I started to learn Welsh when we first moved here I, I quickly gave up because um, well I'm not going to go into that um, so uh, the, um, <clears throat> the fibre is uh, from Llan Wenog sheep um, and it's up from a farm or a small holding um, near Lampeter and it is absolutely gorgeous to work with. Um, I started spinning the other evening. I was making dinner and <laughs> I said I was going to make this a short video didn't I and here I am waffling on um, but hey let's go with it. Um, yeah so I was making dinner and I needed to be near the kitchen um, but uh, I didn't want to just stand around in the kitchen doing nothing um, <clears throat> so I sat the room next door to the dining room and all my stuff from Wonderwall was uh, just sat in there so I grabbed the spindle and I grabbed this fibre uh, and in the end I may have accidentally overcooked dinner because I got so <laughs> carried away uh, with spinning this this gorgeous fibre so yeah um, and I have got a huge bag I didn't bring the bag with me uh, but I've got a huge bag full of this stuff so I'm kind of excited to see how much I get out of the bag um, I think um, I think maybe it will probably be a bit ambitious to say that I'd get a sure quantity but I think it will be um, lovely as a nice cowl or, or something like that because it's so lovely and squishy um i've completely forgotten where i was then uh, my phone is driving me crazy um i found out that i deleted a whole bunch of stuff but my phone had stored it in a big file called recently deleted <laughs> which was taking up a whole bunch of space um not quite sure what the point of deleting things if it then keeps them somewhere else but hey i'm sure i will appreciate it one day when i've accidentally deleted something um but anyway <clears throat> i'm gonna move quickly on otherwise um i am never gonna get this video finished <laughs> before my uh saturday morning group arrives um so i also bought someone else's hand spun <laughs> i couldn't resist this skein um absolutely gorgeous hopefully uh, <clears throat> you can see all of the beautiful autumnal colors in that um these are just my colors uh i couldn't resist it was a complete bargain it was um in a bucket on one of the um stands for um some of the some of the guilds had um stands there and this was one of the the spinner and weaver guilds uh, i can't remember unfortunately off the top of my head which of the guilds um this was on and there's no information on here about who spun it or what the fiber content is uh, but it was just five pounds for a hank of hand spun so i had to, to grab that um, and i'm thinking about just making myself a pair of like really simple wrist warmers or hand warmers out of that depending on how far it goes um i had a pair a few 
years ago that I completely lived in over the colder months, but um, then um, one of them got damaged and I've been meaning to, to knit myself another pair, um, but I haven't quite got around to it. So that's the plan for that. And of course, I thought it would be a nice learning experience if I work with someone else's handspun, um, then hopefully it will help me improve my own. Um, anyway, that's my justification for purchasing that. <laughs> um, so next I have um, some fibre. Uh, again, you might see the colour theme from um, <laughs> coming out here. Uh, this is from um, a company called wriggle fingers i'll show you their label there oops and you can see how much i paid for the braid but whatever um it is um from a breed called southdown um which i haven't never worked with i mean obviously as a new spinner there is tons out there that i i haven't worked with uh, but i couldn't resist these beautiful beautiful colors there's oranges and yellows um coming into some sort of dusky purples um uh yeah so it, it's beautiful so i can't wait to, to get that on the spindle um i'm not sure whether i will continue to spin this until it's all done or whether i shall not be able to resist and uh, jump into this but time will tell so uh next I am going to show you some beautiful Wensley Dale that I bought. Uh, a couple of years ago, we went on holiday up to the Yorkshire Dales um, with um, the in-laws. And while we were there, we came across a, a little wool shop and um, I bought some Wensley Dale. It's my first time working with it. And it has become, since then, absolutely my favourite um, breed-specific yarn to work with. Um, I've knit a shawl and a scarf. And um, there was a company at Wonderwall called Home Farm Wensley Dales. So I just knew that I had to uh, come away with uh, some of their yarn. And uh, I think there's a little video of the Wensley Dale sheep um, in the start of this. So you may have seen the sheep that, um, or at least part of the flock that this uh, yarn has come from. Um, he had double knit and four ply yarns. Um, <clears throat> I, I tend to gravitate towards four ply. Uh, in the double knit, they had some beautiful dyed colors, um, but he also had a scarf that was knit up um, in this beautiful natural brown, a lovely lacy scarf. Um, so I kind of fell in love with that and um, I got a free pattern um, with the purchase of the yarn. So I've got, uh, I think, four skeins of this to knit up a lovely scarf. So hopefully um, that will go on the needle soon. Um, but he did tell me that um, they will be um, dyeing up some of the beautiful colours that they had in the double knit in the four ply in the not too distant future. So I must get onto their website and see if uh, they've got a newsletter or something that I can be kept up to date. Um, so they're Home Farm Wensley Dales um, and their website is just homefarmwensleydales.com. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was that. I did manage to find um, a couple of samples of uh, Welsh wool um, so I've brought those home with me um, in the thought that I will have a, a knit. I'll probably just knit up a couple of swatches and then if I like them, hopefully I will be able to get in contact with uh, these uh, companies. I did have uh, quick chats with uh, both of them, um, but both of the stands were quite busy when I was there um, to see whether potentially they might be interested in stocking in shops. And they both said that uh, they would uh, certainly consider it. So... We shall see. The first one is um, from Cambrian Yarns, or uh, I think that's the name, Cambrian Mountain Wool. Um, and this is, I'm gonna read the information off the back so I get it right. It's a community interest company um, which helps develop rural farming economies. So I believe um, they are a sort of a cooperative and they source fleeces from um, Welsh farms. And uh, they had a little sample pack of uh, all of the colours that they had. It says on the back again that these colours are inspired by the Cambrian Mountains, the, its small holdings, cottages, ancient mineral mines and wild landscape. Um, <clears throat> so I bought a sample pack. Sorry about the, uh, the glare on the plastic, but I'm not going to unpack it all. Um, so this has all of the colours in. 
I also bought, again, I don't think I bought it with me. I bought a full skein of one of the grey neutral colours. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but I thought I would um, look at knitting this up into a shawl for myself. With uh, maybe striping in some of the, the, the colours from these little sample balls. So I'm looking forward to, to that one. Um, and that's from um, Welsh Mule. Is the, the breed of sheep, I believe, for that one. And then the other one that I found uh, was this one. Istrad. Istrad, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Um, but again, it's um, pure, undyed wool farmed in Wales. Uh, this one is a skein of DK. Um, so, yeah. Uh, again, in a lovely, beautiful, natural colour. Um, so I'm looking forward to to um, working with that and, and seeing what that one's like. So on to the next. I've got um, oh, I did I did bring with me the full skein of the the Cambrian. So that's the the full full skein there. So yeah, hopefully um, that will make it's. It's quite soft. It's not the softest. It's not a merino, um, but it's definitely next to skin soft. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how that knits up. I've just got to find a, a nice pattern that will enable me to use that with uh, <clears throat> with all the, the different colours in there. So if you've got any uh, suggestions for patterns that might suit um, using some mini skeins, then uh, let me know. Put in the down bar or contact me on uh, Instagram or Avery. I'd love to love to hear your suggestions. The next um, I bought from an indie dyer. Um, this was from Belika Yarns. I think the name of the company is. I can't. The label is upside down in the packaging. Um, and again, I don't want to open it all up because it'll probably be a while before I cast this on. Um, I told myself I wasn't going to buy any single skeins of sock yarn. But um, anyone who knows me knows that I love orange. So I just couldn't resist this beautiful gradient. Um, it just had to come home with me. And again, you know, I had a nice chat with the, the lady on the stand and she had um, been called up at short notice to go to Wonderwall. So she'd only had a week notice. She was on the reserve list. Um, so I think she'd been dying like crazy. Uh, but her, her store was beautiful, as were all of the others that uh, that were at the, the festival. So um, it was nice to be able to support someone who'd had to, to jump in to fill a spot at the last minute. Um, <clears throat> I bought a little mini skein from Easy Knits in a super bright yellow. And the reason I bought this, um, I didn't, I should have bought it with me, but a few weeks ago, um, Amy from um, Stranded Dye Works, she has a lovely podcast and a Etsy shop where she sells her beautiful hand-dyed yarns. And I purchased a skein of her Batcave colorway, or which was inspired by Batman. Um, and I was on the lookout for something I am really fond of contrast heels toes and cuffs on my socks at the moment so I was on the lookout for something that would contrast with that I was hoping that I might have enough left over from the pencil socks that I've been knitting to do um, contrast heels and toes on the back cave socks but um, although I've got a little bit left I wasn't sure it would be quite enough so I found this super bright uh, mini skein on easy knits so that one had to, to come with home with me just a couple more things left to um, to show you. Um, I had to buy um, some, I've already told you about my love of Wensleydale and um, from the Istrad farm, this uh, yarn that I've already showed you, they also had um, a little bit of top on the um, stand. So I had to, sorry about the super crinkling on this package. I had to buy some of that to have a go at spinning with. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to, to dip into that. <clears throat> One unexpected purchase. This was kind of a last minute purchase on the last day. Um, and my heaviest purchase as well. <laughs> I crazily bought four huge skeins and I've just bought one to show you because I really couldn't face carrying all four to the shop. But I bought huge, big, four big cones of this t-shirt yarn in various greys and blues. 
Um, we have a real fireplace in our living room, an open fire, and um, although we've got a fire guard up against it, sometimes if we have super heavy rain or in hail storms, um, it thunders down the chimney and kicks up tiny little specks of soot which uh, flick out onto the carpet. Um, so for a while I have been wanting to um, put a little rug in front of the fireplace uh, to protect the carpet, just something that I could easily sort of pick up and chuck in the wash. Um, I've had my eye out for one, haven't found one. Um, and then I thought, well, why don't I just make one? Um, and they had a special offer on these um, big cones of uh, cotton yarn so I thought that would be perfect and they had some colours that matched um, some of the tile patterning around the fireplace um, so I thought give that a go when I'm going to actually get around to making all these things who knows um, but uh, I'm sure I will one day <laughs> um, a couple of little bits and pieces um, came home also came home with me i bought this um sort of spinning tool from hilltop cloud so it's kind of a wraps per inch tool um but there's also a handy um sort of gauge down the side so you can lay your yarn on top and it gives you an idea of uh, what weight you've uh, spun hopefully you can see that so that was uh, <clears throat> a handy little tool from hilltop cloud um I also purchased a pair of needles. I wasn't able, after in my last podcast, chatting about um, my higher, higher sharps, I was on the lookout to treat myself for, to a new pair of 2.25 millimeter higher, higher sharps. But um, there were a few places selling higher, highers, but they didn't have the right size. So in the end, I decided to go for, I saw these, um, a pair of Chalgoos. Um, 2.25 so I thought I'd give these a go so now I've shown you I'll be able to get a new pair of socks cast on um, I was just saying last night that uh, I don't have any socks on the needles at the moment I was knitting two pairs and they're both finished um, so I have got the sock itch it's not right to um, not have a pair of socks on the needles I think it's pretty much against the law so uh, before I get arrested by the knitting police I must get something cast on and then <clears throat> finally um, I made two purchases from Jenny at Owl About Yarn and um, I bought a absolutely beautiful sock blank from her. Um, I am super nerd and I love my fandoms um, and Doctor Who and she had these beautiful TARDIS sock blanks. I'm trying to get it so the glare doesn't show. She had them on a few different background colours. But I couldn't resist the lilac, so I had to go from that for that. Um, so yeah, actually, I have needles. I have sock blank. Hmm. A plan is forming. <laughs> and also, if you're going to buy a Tardis sock blank, then you must have a Tardis progress keeper to go with it. So, <clears throat> not sure if my camera is going to focus on that, but I'm pretty sure you can get the gist absolutely beautiful so yeah <clears throat> and i think the wonder wall bag is empty so uh, i have finally reached the end if you have stuck with me thank you very much um i know um myself sometimes i stick uh when i'm watching podcasts i skip over haul videos because uh, it can get a bit like oh look what i have you know <laughs> Um, and while it's nice to be inspired, uh, sometimes if uh, you don't have yarn pennies or you don't have access uh, to um, some of the suppliers and retailers, uh, it, it can also be a bit um, kind of hmm to watch, can't it? If you know that you're you're not going to be getting your hands on any of these lovelies yourself anytime soon. So yeah, thanks for sticking with me if you have. And um, I shall be back, hopefully... Um, in the not too distant future um, and next time I will give you a bit more of an update on um, what's been happening um, and a, a sort of roundup of my first month in the shop so um, hopefully see you again soon um, bye for now